So in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to do some trace tables. Uh, and this is the AQA uh, GCSE, okay? We're gonna walk you through some trace tables and just also I'm gonna kind of talk about how you can break them down. But I'm also going to go over to how you can write some pseudocode. So what we've got here is our subroutine calculate. Now, one thing to bear in mind here is this subroutine has got a parameter uh, passed into it. So there's a parameter there. Now that means whatever, whoever uses this subroutine, and a value is usually passed in. And in this case, it's going to be 50 for this question. But we're just gonna have a look at how this works there. A to N, this is an assignment. Wherever you see this arrow, it means assign. The variable has been assigned the value N. B has been assigned the value zero. Now we're going to repeat code. So A is going to be div two, B is plus one. So say for example, you had A 13. If that was divided by two, you actually use div as a way to round it down to a whole number. So 13 divided by two wouldn't be 12.5. In this case, it would be six. So just be aware of that, all right? Because this will help us as we carry on with the rest of this. Now, this type of repetition as well, this will carry this out. So all of this happens before it checks the condition. So the repetition, so the repeat, is carried out then the condition is checked is checked all right now what we're going to do here is we're going to go through this and show how to write this out so whenever you see the assignment that is when the value is typed in, okay? So at this case, we have seen an assignment at A, and that is, a, in this question, it wants to see how it works with the value 50. So A is equal to N. So that goes in there as 50. B is equal to zero, and there is no output. And programming is sequential, so we've done that line. We've done that line. Now we're going on to our repeat. Now, again, the value A has been assigned a div 2. This column's already used, so we need to go down one, which is 25. B is B plus 1. So you can see that is plus 1 there. You don't necessarily need to do that. I'm doing this to help you understand how to do it. 25 div 2 is not 12.5. It is 12. And B goes up by 1. Is A less than or equal to 1? Well, no, it's not. So I'm going to go back up to the top, to the repeat, and do it again. 12 is 6 and 3. 6 is 3. This is 4. 3 is now 1, and 4 becomes 5. Until A is less than or equal to 1. It is less than or equal to 1. Just so you're aware, less than or equal to 1 in pseudo, less than or equal to one in Python. Now, I've completed that. B is going to be output, so we have an output now. We're not assigning any values. So we're now onto a new line of code, so therefore, output of B is five. So notice my process of how I walked around with it. Now. State the value that will be output. Now, be careful here because many students make the mistake of assuming they're working with A. No. Have a look at B. So, calculate 1. So, if I put number 1 in here, so if A, so we're going to put N, A, B, just so you can just do a quick tr trace table here. All right. If N was the value 1, all right, the value of A is 1. The value of B is 0. Remember, the key thing about this type of loop is it does all of the code before. All right? 
before it checks the condition. So, have a look here. A is A div 2. Well, A divided by 2, unfortunately, we're going to end up with a 0 there. But we're not looking at this. We're looking at the we're looking at the output, which is a B. B goes up by 1. Then A is less than or equal to 1, so it outputs B. So output of B would be 1. Do not write 1. This is bad because we are working with an integer, so we need to use an integer. All right. So this is your answer here. Quick question, a uh, quick one on giving variables that are making it easier to read or understand. Well, it wants you to do this for variable B. So what you've got to do is analyze that, do a level of analysis, what is the pattern that's emerging, and I can see that this is increasing. This is counting. So you need to use a variable name such as count or uh, you could have uh, counter or times. You've got to make sure you an, an analyze what's happening before you move on. All right. So that's a quick run through of that. I'm going to try and go through this bit quickly now. Now we've got the same. So this was from the front page. So this is what I was looking at before. And you'll see that this repetition happened completes the code, complete code, then it does the check, then check, all right? Different, they're both, they're both looping, but what you'll notice about this one is as we go down, it checks the condition first. Now, if that condition has not been met, the loop may never happen. All right, bear that in mind. So that loop may never happen. But the way that we write it is we need to make sure we reference the code. So I'm going to say here, one of the difference is the repeat dot, 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 dot until, all right, in figure one, we'll complete the code before checking the, so it's going to complete the code before checking the condition. Now notice I've referred to the repeat until, and I've also referred to the figure that I'm talking about. That's really good to help examiners. I think if I was marking that, I'd be like, yes, you know exactly what you're talking about. You're referring to the image, and you're also giving me an example of the code. This one here would be while, and while, in figure two may never complete the code. All right, so they may never complete the code. This is because the condition, condition is checked at the beginning. Now, I'm going to move on to one more question that we're going to work through. Now, what we've got here is a subroutine. Now, if you aren't very strong at programming, one thing that you can do to, to improve your marks is actually pay attention to the bullet points that they give you. A developer is using a structured approach and developing a solution, and they want to write a subroutine to solve one of the sub-problems. The subroutine should have the following. It should be called bind minimum. Nice, easy one for you here. 
all you need to do is write the word subroutine, and this is not in Python, this is in pseudocode. Subroutine find underscore minimum. Sorry, minimum. Tick, I've got that mark. All right, now it says it should have an array passed in. So I'm going to have my array passed in. Okay, so here's my array of, I'm going to say array underscore of numbers. I've now got two marks. Boom, well done. So if you struggle and you don't manage to do the rest of it or figure out what the question is asking, then at least you've got your two marks and setting up your subroutine and doing the array as your parameter. All right. Now, to continue on with this, what I'm going to do now is I am going to, in this question, uh, you won't have seen this in the exam paper, but you... When you are looking at an exam paper, one thing to pay close attention to is how it starts. Now, on this exam paper, this says that the array starts at zero. All right? So just bear that in mind. This says that we're starting at zero. However, in this question, you can't see it, but on the front page, our array starts at 1 as an index. All right. So on the front page, before these questions were done, the array started as 1 as an index. All right. Because what we're going to do is we're going to do min, and we're going to assign array, okay, underscore num. We're going to give it the very first value. Like I said, we're starting at 1. If it was 0, we would need to do this slightly differently, and I may have time to show you that as an example. And we're going to go for x is, we're going to allocate x to, because that is position 1, and we need to look at position 2. There's no point in looking at itself again. 2 len of the array of numbers. So we're going to go from position 2, all right, to the length of the array. Now what we do here is each item we go through, imagine we've got one, uh, we're going to go for 8, 1, 9, 2, 3, all right. If this is position 1, this is 2, 3, 4, 5. We're going to start at position 2. This is already allocated to min. And if our length was, say, 5, it would go 2 to 5. To 5. If, there's a, if their length was 6, it would go 2 to 6, and so on. So, 1, we've already moved into min. So that's our starting number. Then we've got 2, 3, 4, 5. If, our, if the length of our array is 5, then that works. Now, if we started at 0, we would need to subtract 1 from that, but we're just going to carry on for a minute. If, all right, array underscore num x is less than min, then what we're going to do is replace the value of min. So min now is assigned, so look at the arrow that I'm using, min is now assigned array underscore num x. So it's the process of swapping things around. All right, I'm going to end that if. I'm going to end my for. Then it says here, return the small. So I've gone through every item in the list, and I'm returning the smallest value, which is min. So it is return min. And I'm going to end my subroutine to finish that off.
So you can see that the value of x, in this case, if it was 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, one last thing to finish off. If, for example, my array started at 0, what I would have to do, all right, is start at 0. And because of the way the counting works, all right, I would need to change that to 0. I need to change that to 1. And because I'm counting from 0, that would need to be, so if I, that would need to be len minus 1. Because I'm obviously changing my count position from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So if I started at 0, you'll notice that the len of that would still be 5 and it would put me out of range. So just be aware of your start positions and what your length becomes if you are starting at that position. Hopefully that is useful in getting you to break down a subroutine and look at passing values in and out of a single array.